So in this video, I need to tie together the last two videos and go through the computation of what this uh, what this this disk method is uh, that allows us to find the volumes of these solids of revolution. Um, so first, briefly remember what I said in the first video. In the first video, I said, you know, what an integral really does. Oops, what an integral really does is an integral takes takes a bunch of things and adds them up. So we said, you know, when you do the integral of f of x dx, what it's doing is it's saying, well, this is this is a height, and this is a really minuscule width, and so it's just adding up a height times a little width, and a height times a little width, and a height times a little width. So you're adding up a bunch of these rectangles, and when you add up a whole lot of these rectangles, we end up with the entire area underneath the curve. Right? So I, I want us to remember one of the figures that you saw in the second video. Um, the one that I thought that was the most interesting was the one where we took the sine function, and we revolve that around the x-axis, right? So you sort of got this this vase shape thing here. And in that in that second video, I, I spent a lot of time asking what the shape of the cross sections were. And we said, you know, when I when I revolve around the x-axis here, that's supposed to be a, a revolution arrow. It's not a capital G. Um, when I revolve around the x-axis here, when I take the cross sections that are perpendicular to the x-axis. We said that they were circles, right? So if I pick this one right here, you know, if I were to if I were to cut this vase right here, it'd basically have a circle shape. If I made another cut here, I'd you know I'd have another circle shape here. It's almost like now I'm decorating this striped vase. Um, but the idea is that all of these cross sections are circles, and so I guess I would ask you, like, back back in this one here, we can construct this shape by pasting a bunch of rectangles next to one another. If you wanted to construct a solid vase, how could you do it? Well, I, I would argue you could take, you know, circles of vase material and just sort of stack them one on top of the other. And if I stacked up a whole ton of circles, eventually I could build up the entire shape of this vase, right? So to find the volume of this thing, I'm going to add up a whole bunch of circles with some amount of thickness. Ran out of space for the word thickness there. But the idea is when, when I'm building this thing, I'm going with heights that have some thickness. So they're basically, uh, they're basically rectangles. In this one, I'm taking circles which have some amount of thickness to them. Um, and I'm going to go through exactly what the steps are in the next slide. Um, but, but that's sort of the, the general idea for what I'm going to be doing here. All right, so let's, let's take a look at the specific steps. So here they are. You probably want to, want to pause the video and, and, and write these down in your notes. Um, so the steps in computing volume by the disk method. By the way, it's called the disk method because the, the circles with thickness that we're talking about would basically be considered disks. Not like a compact disk that has a circle in the middle of it, but like a solid disk of, you know, vase material. Um, so step one, uh, determine the thickness of the disk. And that's always going to be either dx or dy. And it's a very easy thing to do because it's always the same as the axis of revolution. So if you're revolving around the x-axis, your integral is going to end in dx. If you're if you're revolving around the y-axis, your integral is going to end in dy. Um, the second one, determine the radius of the disk in terms of the variable chosen in step one. Right? So what that means is, depending on whether you chose dx or dy, your radius is either going to have an x in it, or it's going to have a y in it. Um, and I'll go to a specific example after this. So we'll, we'll see this playing out. Um, step three is to determine the bounds of integration just by looking at where the function starts and stops. So it's, it's, it's sort of the same thing that, that we talked about when we did areas of these things. If you've got, you know, a region like this and you're revolving around the x-axis, your bounds will be from here to here. Similarly, if you take a region like this and revolve around the y-axis, your bounds will be y values that go between here and here. Right? So step one, choose it if it's dx or dy. Step two, figure out what the radius of the disk is, and, and I'll talk about that. Um, step three, find the bounds of integration by looking at either the x 
length or the y length. And step four, the last part, um, is to write and evaluate that integral using the thing that I mentioned before. You know, it'll be the integral of pi times the radius, which was chosen in step two, the thickness, which was chosen in step one, and then you'll have your bounds of integration, which we found in step three. So I've got two examples of these, um, and both of the examples are related to the, the images that we looked at in the second video. We're basically going to compute the first and the third volumes that were talked about in that one. We're not going to do the vase one in the middle because it requires a calculator, and I'm going to save that for tomorrow. So here we go. The first example that was given in, in the second video in this sequence, uh, find the volume of the solid generated when the region between f of x equals x squared plus 1 so x squared plus 1 is a function roughly like this. Between that and the x-axis on the interval from 0 to 2, so 0 to 2, so that region is revolved around the x-axis. Right? Great. So step 1 was for me to determine what is the thickness of this, of the, what, what is the thickness of the dis disks going to be? Right? And in some sense, it's an easy question because I said whatever axis you're revolving around, it's that, right? So this one is going to be dx. If you'd like justification as to why, think about the fact that that this region is going to flip over the x-axis and be down here. And then when you go back and draw in a circular cross-section, so it's sort of like imagine that all of these circles are you know, here, and we're stacking them all up on top of one another. Just realized I forgot to do the dotted ones along the back. Um, the, these circles, you know, imagine if you were actually looking at it from the side, you'd have a circle here, a little bit bigger circle, a little bit bigger circle, a little bit bigger circle, a little bit bigger circle as you're building this thing up. And, and I'm purposely using a really fat marker for this so that you'll hopefully notice that each of these circles has a thickness which is horizontal. And that horizontal thickness would be measured along the x-axis. I hope that makes sense, but if it doesn't, you can just rely on the fact that, hey, look, it's dx, right? Um, so next step, step two, was for me to determine what the radius of this revolution is going to be. And the radius for the disk method is always just going to be a matter of how far is it, like, and you can even draw it in here, how far is it from the axis of revolution up to the function, right? How far is that distance? And the reality is that distance is always just going to be an expression of the function. The thing you need to keep in mind is that whatever you pick for this radius has to use the same variable as this. So since it's dx, hey, this is perfect. It's x squared plus 1. So my radius of revolution is x squared plus 1. Right? And that should make sense because any of these heights that I choose is basically the height of the function, and the height of the function is what the function says it is. Right? Third step is to determine what are the bounds of integration. Right? Because this is an x integral, evidenced by the x variables in the radius, my bounds need to be on the x-axis, how far does this region extend? And we can see that it starts at 0 and goes all the way to 2, so my bounds will be from 0 to 2. Step four is to set up the integral. The integral for these things is always simply going to be the integral of pi r squared times your thickness. That's always how, how the disk method works. Right? The pi is a constant, so I can always pull that out. So I'm going to have pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of the radius. That's x squared plus 1 squared because it's pi r squared for the area of a circle, times the thickness, which is dx. And now all I need to do is evaluate that integral to find out what the volume of this, you know, trumpet horn shape thing is. Uh, so let's see, in order to evaluate this integral, I need to uh, f expand the, the expression inside so we get x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1 dx. So this is pi times one-fifth x to the fifth plus two-thirds x cubed plus x 
evaluate it from 0 to 2. So now we have pi times. If I plug 2 into all of these things, I'm going to end up with 32 over 5 plus, let's see here, 16 over 3 plus 2 minus pi times, and in this case, when I plug 0 into all of these places, they, are, they all end up being 0, so we don't get anything there. Um, this video is getting to be a little bit on the long side, so I'm going to skip my next step of work. Um, your next step would be to get a common denominator of 15 among all of these things. When you do that, you should end up getting that the final answer is 216 pi over 5. And this is the volume in, you know, in units cubed. Um, that's the volume of this trumpet horn shape thing that we just found. Um, I've got one more example, and in the next example I'm going to be re revolving around the y-axis, uh, so we'll, we'll take a look at that one next. Okay, so now I want to consider the region T, which is in the first quadrant, um, bounded by y equals x squared. Okay, so we have y equals x squared. We have x equals 0, which is basically the y-axis. And we have the line y equals 4, so you've got the line y equals 4 up here. So we're talking about this region here. I want to take that region and revolve it around the y-axis. So I'm revolving this thing around the y-axis. So just like we saw in, in, the, in the second video, you're getting this sort of bowl or reflector shape. that we had from Maple were, were a lot better than my drawings, but really that's not bad. That, that looks like a, the, the, you know, the bat signal reflector piece, kind of. So I've got this thing and I want to find the volume. We'll, we'll walk through the steps again. Step one, what is the thickness? The thickness of this thing is always related to what axis am I revolving around? Revolving around the y-axis, so the thickness is dy. Second, Right. Second, what is the radius going to be? And again, I think it's worth drawing in. I think it's worth saying, here is the axis of revolution. I'm going perpendicular to that out to the function. And I want to know what that distance is. Remember that the radius has to use this variable. So what it, what it comes down to is my original function was y equals x squared. But I can rewrite that function by resolving it to be x equals the square root of y. And what it really comes down to, what's really neat about it, is, is that, that those two things are different statements of the function. x equals the square root of y is fitting here. I'm going to have to pause the video for a minute. OK, so I was just saying that uh, when you have this written as x equals the square root of y, it's giving the horizontal distance to the function, whereas when you take y equals x squared, it's giving you sort of the vertical distance to the function. Um, I'd like to say more about that, but we're really already, already pretty long on the video today, so I'm, I'm trying to, to, to cut myself off here. Long story short, when, when you know that your integral has a thickness of dy, rewrite your function in terms of y. So the radius here is the square root of y. It's effectively the function that was used, y equals x squared, but it's written in its other form, x equals the square root of y. Um, third step, what are the bounds? Now, if we were looking at the x-axis, this goes from 0 over to 2. But because this is dy, because it's in terms of y, I'm looking at the y-axis, and the y-axis we go from 0 to 4. So my bounds are from 0 to 4. Step number four is just where we set up the integral. The integral is supposed to be the integral of pi r squared times the thickness. And when you're using the disk method, it's always going to look like it's always going to be that way. And you may be asking, when do you use the disk method? Um, for now, all of these problems use the disk method. In a couple days, I'll, I'll show you another method, and we'll, we'll get there. Um, so again, this is now pi, the integral from 0 to 4. My radius is the square root of y, conveniently squared times the thickness, which is dy. This integral simplifies into just y dy. And then I can evaluate that. This is pi times 1 half y squared evaluated from 0 to 4. So that's pi times a half times 16 minus 0. 
So in the end, the volume of the bowl searchlight shape thing is 8 pi. I'm stopping now. That should be enough to get you through all of the examples in the homework tonight. Um, all, the home, all the problems we're doing are, are non-calculator examples, so hopefully the computation will stay nice. Um, we'll get into the calculator stuff tomorrow. Um, so good luck. I'll see you tomorrow.